are you all aware of the story of abhimanyu from mahabharata for those of you who aren't let me tell you abhimanyu was that young brave warrior who dared to enter the chakravyu formation in the epic battle of mahabharata without anyone's help and without having a prior know how of how to get out of the situation now history has labeled him as brave but would you consider the possibility that this was not one of his best decisions i mean if i were uh, to come across a challenging situation then i would first try to gather all the know how of how to get out of the situation rather than nose dive deep into it at one go now we as clinicians come across such situations often in our clinical practice baffling conditions which we have never read before in our medical textbooks uncanny symptoms and signs which we probably have never heard before all these situations i term as the typical abhimanyu situations should we take up the challenge to treat them or should we not now at such times we use our judgment we use our expertise sometimes we succeed and sometimes we fail now i came across one such patient in the november of 2017 she had come to me with an enlargement of one side of the face she was suffering from a condition known as congenital partial hemifacial hyperplasia now let me tell you this condition is uh, occurs since birth and it is so rare that it occurs in one in 86000 live births very little is uh, uh, given in the literature about the treatment part of it now she had come to me with a tiny ray of hope because the other doctors that she had visited earlier had clearly told her that there was no cure for her treatment they had also asked her to stay away from any kind of surgical process because that might uh, uh, cause her some morbidity post operatively now this was the typical abhimanyu situation should i take up the challenge or should i not now i did not want to disappoint her also i am of the firm belief that there is a solution to every problem either it lies with you or with someone else and you as physicians should try your very best to find a solution to your patient's problem from any source that you can so i did the next wisest thing i asked her to give me some time to study her condition i went across various literatures on the subject i discussed the case with many of my colleagues not only from my branch but from other super specialties as well like the plastic surgeons the maxillofacial surgeons i intended to find a cure some day uh, during one such discussion with the maxillofacial surgeon dr amit date he suggested that i do a 3d printing of the patient's skull now 3d printing is a process which is used uh, for dental implantation procedures and let me tell you 3d printing is a process wherein it is also known as additive manufacturing wherein you get an exact replica of a person's body part made using a radiological data which is imported into the software and then it is printed on a 3d printer layer by layer with a technique which is known as fused deposition modeling now once we had this skull 3d printed things became much clearer a situation which seemed like churning the ocean water suddenly became much easier with the use of this 3d printed bone we were able to plan and execute the exact process of our surgery precisely without causing her any functional morbidity post operatively also with the help of our 3d printed bone we were able to explain to the patient the extent of the surgery that was possible in her without giving her much of complications post operatively so she knew exactly what to expect from the surgery so as you can see this 3d printing made life so much simpler for us that even while entering the operation theater which is our battlefield we were much more confident we were much less stressful so uh, i believe that uh, this 3d printing can be used in a number of other processes as well like 
you know i have used 3d printing not only pre operatively but to teach my students the finer nuances of a difficult surgery as well i have used it as a teaching aid for example in conditions uh, for which the pathophysiology is very difficult to understand now if you take into consideration this condition known as benign paroxysmal positional vertigo wherein the pathology is that the uh, particles small particles in the innermost ear are displaced from their normal anatomical position which leads to the patient having severe attacks of giddiness or vertigo the treatment being that we give them various maneuvers that is we tilt their head and neck at various angles so has to bring the particles back to their normal anatomical position now to uh, understand this pathophysiology is very difficult but using a 3d printed model i was able to explain to my students very clearly how the particles could be easily brought back to their normal position using certain maneuvers of the head and neck and things became much more simpler after that i do believe that a good surgeon is one who learns constantly from his mistakes and that from others mistakes as well a good surgeon is one who imbibes knowledge from every dark situation that he is faced with a good surgeon is one who accepts different methods of treating a particular condition or a different methods of uh, surgery a good surgeon is one who embraces technology for the betterment of his patients thus in turn is always striving to to give the patient the best that he can now last year i had the opportunity to learn a new technique of addressing a thyroid nodule now generally uh, when you get a thyroid nodule which is a swelling on the front of your neck the treatment is a uh, thyroidectomy surgery which is a major surgery lasting for about 2 hours the patient requires a good hospital stay of at least 2 days with a drain around his neck it is under general anesthesia and uh, not to men mention the morbidity associated with general anesthesia and a major surgical procedure but with this new technique of uh, treating a thyroid nodule what we are able to do is just insert a specialized antenna into the thyroid nodule now this antenna can be a microwave antenna or a radio frequency antenna we destroy the cells inside the thyroid nodule which leads to the death of the cells and these cells are then phagocytosed or eaten up by our body's immune system macrophages thus the swelling slowly but surely disappears in a matter of 1 to 6 months so as you can see it hardly leaves any scar behind as compared to the surgical scar that we see on the right also this procedure can be done under local anesthesia so all the morbidities associated with general anesthesia and a major surgical procedure are thus avoided not to mention this is a procedure which takes hardly 15 to 20 minutes the patient can literally walk home in 2 hours and does not need a hospital stay that is he can just join back work the ne very next day so you can see this life has uh, this has made life so much simpler for patients suffering from thyroid nodule but for me as a surgeon the learning curve was steep because we as surgeons in india are not used to using the ultrasonography machine and this procedure has to be done under ultrasonographic guidance but if this makes my uh, the life of my patient so much simpler so that he can literally walk home in 2 hours join work the next day avoid so many major complications then i am willing to spare my time and energy in learning this process and so that my patients could benefit from it the point i am trying to make here is that why try to be a gambler like abhimanyu why not take all the help that you can get we are architects of a brighter future and a more sophisticated one at that why not combine everything we have our we can just have a multidisciplinary approach and combine medicine science and technology so that our patients can get the best of all the three worlds thank you